And now it says it's going to take an hour, an hour and a half. That's a lot longer than CUDA. Um, that didn't go well. Uh, I guess I'm out a whole bunch of money on this brand new card. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to go over the difference between CUDA cores and uh, optics. So the RTX 3060 or any of the RTX family, as far as I'm aware, have the ability to render native, natively render ray tracing. Um, I know AMD products have that same capacity or a similar capacity, but it's nowhere near as um, uh, evolved or as advanced as the um, NVIDIA product lineup. And you can see that borne out in the um, open data information from Blender organization on uh, the benchmarks they have, the users have shared. Uh, these are average scores, of course. So like you can see every single top category here on the side is dominated by an NVIDIA card. I haven't filtered this at all. Um, if we go to uh, the next page, it allows us to search by card specifically. And this is the card that I have 3060 at the moment. You'll see it has a score of um, 2300. But then of course, if you look at the highest scores like the 3090, it's uh, sitting way up top at um, 6546. 3690 has a huge amount of VRAM. It has 24 gigs of VRAM, which is amazing. Uh, the reason I went with the 3060 instead of 3060 Ti, which would have been a more logical option if I was going simply for numbers, like for speed, is because the 3060 has 12 gigs of VRAM, whereas the 3060, uh, 3060 Ti only has eight which means I get an extra four gigs of VRAM, which is pretty big for a, like a big image heavy scene in, in cycles. Um, it allows you to put more images in the scene. Uh, the image that I'm currently rendering as a, as a, res as a um, test to show the difference between, uh, if you go in here into um, preferences and then you look at here, you have CUDA optics and none. So under these tabs, especially under CUDA and optics, you have the ability to select I believe you also have the ability to select multiple GPUs um, and you can select your processor. So I encountered some interesting problems when I went to optics uh, and selected both my processor and my graphics card. Uh, it was, uh, you'll see the, you'll see the results. So this is going to be first illustrating the difference in speed between CUDA and optics under this, this particular setup. Um, and then we're going to look at, we're going to do three renders. The first one we're doing currently is um, is just with CUDA cores. So you can see the information here. This is um, NVIDIA SMI, which allows you to see in the um, console a readout of all the information of your graphics card. It doesn't update, it updates every like five seconds. So you'll see up there. So it is, it is still looking at it. So it pulls it every five seconds or so. The GPU, uh, GPU utilization is somewhere in the realm of 100% um, usually. And you can see there's something strange going on because the GPU utilization isn't always 100%. It's like not, not capped, but the CPU utilization is. I have a theory that the CPU can actually hold back your GPU depending on the discrepancy between the two. Like you see there, it's 64%. This might actually change it so that um, the time for rendering a scene is uh, lower if you select both your GPU and your CPU depending on your, your, the speed of your CPU. So the next one I'm going to do is render with just the um, GPU selected for CUDA. And then we're going to do the same two renders in optics. And it'll be interesting to see the results with the same exact scene. I'm not going to do more than that just because of time. Uh, this is a general look. It's not necessarily like a benchmark. So I wouldn't need to have like, you know, 20 or 30 different samples to average out the results. But um, that's what we're going to be doing here. And I will do this a few times and we'll get back to um, the video. All right, we can see here it's finished. Um, it was in, uh, it was running CUDA, rendering in CUDA on my uh, RTX 3060. I didn't use the processor. The interesting thing is, is that you would think the processor would add to the time, but you'd have to do a lot more renders to find out, but this took 34 minutes. Um, the previous one took 36. So it used more power because it was running the processor and took more time. I think the reason that's the case is that it was overloading the um, 
processor or choking the processor so it couldn't feed data to the graphics card. So the graphics card would be sitting there idle because the graphics card is a lot faster at rendering or doing these tasks. It would sit there idle for a certain amount of time and then the C while the CPU is processing the image um, that it was given, uh, and it just, it just sort of chokes off your graphics card. Well, it doesn't make any sense. And this is some of the similar, similar kind of results we're seeing with optics as well. Um, the, next, the next render will be uh, optics and we'll see how that goes. So we will set this up. Preferences again, switch to optics. And actually that's how these work. If this box is selected, that's what's running, optics. So we're gonna select the, um, we're gonna look at the initial like few minutes or a few seconds of the render, just because there's some interesting things going on. Um, it's set up to have both of these run in optics. Um, so let's see how that goes. Oh, well, anyway, I just, I meant to put that in slot four, but anyway, whatever. So it should be rendering here and we should see that it's, again, it's hammering the CPU because that's the way I set it up. And now it says it's going to take an hour, an hour and a half. That's a lot longer than CUDA. Uh, let's see. Let's see what the numbers look like for the graphics card. I might not even finish this render because it's just going to take so absurdly long. See, look at that. It's not even using the graphics card. It's twelve percent. Sixty-five percent. And when I installed it, I, I was like, I was stunned. I wasn't sure what was going on. Did a little research, did a little digging around in the um, diagnostic settings like this. And I found out that, yeah, we're just gonna let it run for another two or three minutes. And it looks like it's the graphics card is still loaded to about 30%, 20%. Average, that's that's wild. That's it's taking the processor so long to render whatever package Blender you splits the render up into that it doesn't have any time to give any more data or information or feed the graphics card, which it has to do. I don't I don't understand why Blender allows you to select the processor as well as the graphics card. To render with if it never makes any difference. It's possible it's just included as a render device. Um, it would be interesting if I had a second, a second uh, RTX graphics card to see how much each one is utilized if they're both selected. I feel like this would happen with a car if you had a car that didn't have RTX or didn't have ray tracing capabilities on it and you tried to run optics on it, it would probably give you almost no results at all or just extra power draw for no gain like this is sitting at an an hour and 19 minutes for optics that's insane so what we're going to do is we're going to cancel this and we're going to switch this yeah so that's the result it didn't go all the way through obviously you can, it's hard to see the grain actually, but there's a lot of grain on it from uh, low samples. So we're just going to uncheck this one and then we're going to try this again. And now we'll confirm, of course, the numbers. Uh, 100%. RTX. Look at the projected time. 13 minutes over CUDA. That is like, what is it taking? Like 30, 36 minutes for uh, 34 minutes? That's, that's well over 2x faster. Anyway, just to confirm the numbers, because what happens is sometimes what Blender will do is it'll actually finish rendering sooner. If it gets to the um, noise, acceptable noise limit that you've set in the Blender settings, I'll show you that. 
Um, so these are the blender settings. You have noise threshold. You can set this, I've got it set to 0 0.001 for rendering. Uh, it doesn't necessarily go through all the samples. If it gets to that acceptable noise threshold, it'll stop rendering. Uh, or if it, whichever one of these it gets to first, it'll stop rendering. You can also set it to uh, a minimum samples or you can set it to a time. So it would, reaching any of these, it would um, quit. You can also set up denoising, which I have not done so that you don't have to render as many samples. The denoising will, will sort of smear your scene a little bit so that it will look not as sharp as if you didn't do, use denoising, but you can slice your render times way down if you use denoising. I'll have to run a whole video on that, um, how to. But um, for now, I'm just looking at these render times. So I'll be back when it finishes and um, we'll, see the, we'll see the results. So uh, see you then. Looks like it's finished rendering at 13 minutes. I mean, that's that's almost fully 3x, not quite 3x, but it's almost fully 3x the uh, 36 minutes we were getting before, um, or 34 minutes, I suppose. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good example of why you might want to use optics. I mean, that's, that's a huge increase, uh, especially for the current gen, um, uh, the current gen ray tracing architecture that NVIDIA is using. There's a reason why. Um, if you look at the uh, the Blender data, that all of the top, almost all of the, the uh, actual entries are NVIDIA cards in the first place, especially NVIDIA cards that can run like RTX based NVIDIA cards. Um, it it's just you can't compete with. Well, AMD doesn't have the doesn't have the technology yet to compete with this kind of uh, ability or speed for ray tracing. This is under Blender. Um, there's much less difference in gaming performance between the two card options, um, but yeah, uh, it does make a difference in viewport settings as well. So this is the viewport. Um, this is with uh, RT or optics selected, and you can see it's pretty fast. You can see the number of samples being calculated there. Um, if I change that to CUDA uh, and I have to, I have to reload the shaders. Shaders reloading, sample lights. Yeah, you can see it's, it's probably equivalent to how much slower it is um, when rendering. So even in the viewport, it makes a big difference, the render viewport. Um, I'm getting higher frame rates. Uh, I'm getting higher frame rates. Also, you might have to test out your viewport settings with the um, processor and the card selected. Like I would advise doing some tests. I'll show you what it looks like with just with nothing. This would be, this would be um, just with your CPU. There's no GPU compute. See on the side there? So this is with no GPU. Oh, that's that, that yeah. Uh-huh. So um, this is why you might want to invest in a pretty good GPU if you want to, if you're getting serious about Blender. It makes the um, <clears throat> excuse me. It makes the creative process. I mean, you need to be able to get the feedback to be able to be effective as a creator. You need to be able to see the results. The faster you can see the results, the uh, the more effective you can be as a creator, or a designer, or whatever it is you do. So, um, in conclusion, it's definitely worth getting a uh, RTX. I'm not a just an Nvidia fanboy. It's just that right now their cards are the best for Blender. Um, uh, like I was saying before, these things like the 3090, yeah, it is like a $2,000 card. I'm talking about Canadian dollars here, um, but it is competing directly with a Quadro. Is the Quadro on this list here? Anyway, it's, it's competing directly with a Quadro, which is a, a card, yeah. No, I don't see the Quadro, which is designed as exclusively for 3D content, like specifically. Um, and I think the Titan is also designed that way specifically. But I mean, the render results for the 3090 are just insane. And this is this is a consumer level card. I mean, that's crazy. 
you get other problems with the 3090, of course, because you know it's it's, it's uh, energy economy is incredibly poor. Um, I don't know if the ratio is poor, but it does consume a lot of power. Um, yeah. So uh, if you're curious, um, this scene is uh, something I used an asset pack that I've been working on for the last few weeks um, for rocks. Yeah. So. Um, if you want, you can check it out on my Gumroad account. Um, you can just visit my Gumroad account. I'll, uh, the link's going to be in the description of the video, or I can show you right here, um, VizRock Asset Package. So it has a bunch of cool stuff going on for it. It's designed specifically for professionals. Um, anybody who's doing ArcViz, uh, if you're gonna, or anybody else who wants to do a large complex scene and is running out of um, virtual uh, VRAM space, because these rocks are designed to be, they're sort of like a hybrid between regular um, UV unwrapped rocks and uh, procedural rocks. They're using a lot of procedural textures, but they're also using albedo maps from uh, real rocks that I photographed at 6K. So they're provided with high resolution textures and images. There's three different level of details for all the different rock sets. There's something like, um, there's eight, that's, tw uh, there's quite a few. There's like, uh, there's eight small ones, flat ones, uh, 14 medium rocks and nine large rocks. And then there's like different LODs for each of those um, amounts. So if you need it like a close-up shot and there's actually five um, seamless 6K textures for different rocks. So, yeah, so uh, check it out um, and uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more content in the future, I'm going to be producing, uh, I'm continuing to produce the VizRock or the uh, Rock tutorial, Learning Blender with Rocks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and I will see you guys later.